Hello from Median Technologies, and welcome to our Imaging 101 series, short subject webinars on the fundamentals of imaging in clinical trials. In this session, Immunotherapy Criteria, you will learn the fundamentals of immunotherapy imaging response criteria and how it is used in an oncology clinical trial to assess the efficacy of an immunotherapy treatment. Traditional chemotherapies involve the direct killing of tumor cells and therefore interfere with cell division. When the treatment works, tumors tend to shrink. With immunotherapy treatments, the immune system is activated to detect and eliminate tumor cells. There are different types of immunotherapy, vaccines, recombinant cytokines, preformed monoclonal antibodies, and immunomodulatory antibodies. Sometimes in immunotherapy, the tumor may actually show a progression first and then a reduction. It is important to understand that the tumor response pattern with chemotherapy may be different from the tumor response to immunotherapy. Results with immunotherapy may take a lot more time than with traditional chemotherapy. The treatment is a three-step process. First, there is administration of drug that will activate the immune system of the patient and start a cellular response. Second, the cellular response attacks the tumor cells which is called the anti-tumor response. Finally, the anti-tumor response may reduce the tumor burden and therefore impact the patient's survival. It may take a significant amount of time to record the response to treatment. For example, in the treatment of melanoma patients with ipilimumab, it took 30 months to see a complete response. So immunotherapies are unlike chemotherapy with which the effects of treatment are more immediate. These charts show the different type of response patterns you can find with immunotherapy. A, B, C, D. A is an immediate response. You can see a sharp decrease in the tumor, and there is no doubt that there is response of that tumor, in this case, shrinking in size. In B, durable, stable disease, you can see the baseline and the various measures of the tumor that show it is stable with a slight reduction in size. This case would be classified as stable disease. In C, you can see that with treatment, there was a sharp increase in the tumor size, followed by a tumor size decrease. This is delayed response, which is quite common in immunotherapy. The sharp increase in tumor size is called a flare or pseudoprogression. In D, you have the same kind of behavior. You see progression and then reduction of tumor size. However, in this case, there is presence of new lesions as depicted in the second line in the graph. As per resist, this is clearly a progression disease with the presence of new lesions. In this example, there is reduction in the main tumor with presence of a new tumor, which will be followed up. Immunotherapy produces these novel response patterns that must be taken into consideration when conducting an immunotherapy clinical trial. Here is a visual of a complete response preceded by flare. After two months, the tumor measures 41 millimeters, a growth compared to 21 millimeters at baseline. The immune system creates this inflammation, seen as a pseudo-expansion of the tumor at two months, but we see at seven months, it has shrunk to eight millimeters for a complete response. Here, you can see a partial response case. The tumor size at baseline is 24 millimeters, after two months, it measures 31 millimeters, but after three months, its size is only 17 millimeters. This is typical of a flare or pseudoprogression in immunotherapy. This is an image of PET scans where you can see the glucose fixed in tumors in the same patient seen at various time points. At baseline, you have several tumors seen with the red arrows. After 12 weeks, you have shrinkage of some of the tumors and expansion of some with presence of new lesions. By 56 weeks, there are no more tumors present. This is a schema of pseudoprogression. In the upper schema, at screening, you have a tumor. Then we see a radiographic progression of that tumor at the second time point with presence of two new lesions. The tumor and new lesions increase in size at the third time point with another new lesion. This is a progressive disease case. In the lower schema, after the second time point, the tumor shrinks, as seen in the third time point. Therefore, this case is a case of pseudoprogression where the tumor expanded before reducing. 
There are specific criteria used for the standard measurement of response in immune therapy treatments. RESIST remains the gold standard for evaluating treatment response in tumor. It is the only FDA-approved criteria and will be required for FDA approval of drug. However, it can lead to inaccurate interpretation of the response due to the presence of new lesions or pseudoprogression of lesions. There was a need of a new response criteria, and a few criteria were created. IRRC, IR-resist, and I-resist. IRRC is based on WHO criteria and is bidimensional. IR-resist is unidimensional. However, like IRRC and resist, it still doesn't deal well with pseudoprogression. The newest criteria is I-resist, which was published in early 2017. It was developed to help with the readings of pseudoprogression. I-resist has not been validated by the FDA, but accounts for all the novel response patterns seen with immunotherapies. Here's an example of different reports of patients. The first report is of RESIST 1.1 and shows the information on target lesions. There are target lesions that are shrinking, a partial response, PR, or growing, then it's a progressive disease, or PD. If there is any new tumor, then as per RESIST, it is considered a progressive disease. You can see this in the second table from the top. There is a new lesion, and hence, irrespective of the effect on target lesions, the response will be progressive disease, or PD. The last table you see on the lower side is the response with I resist. At time point 3, new lesions are appearing, but the overall response is not confirmed, and hence the patient is classified as IUPD, or unconfirmed progression. At time point 4, only once the progression is confirmed is it classified as ICPD, or confirmed progression. This is very typical of I resist for immunotherapies. The differences between I-Resist and Resist 1.1 are minimum since the number of lesions, size of lesions, the cutoffs, etc. are kept the same. However, on the right side of the table, you see what has changed between the two criteria. With I-Resist, there is management of the new lesions. The new lesions are not included in the tumor burden. They are taken into account separately from the target lesions, which makes the evaluation different from Resist, which groups all the lesions together. I resist also accounts for the flare effect with lesions and does not classify them as progressive without a confirmation, unlike resist for which any new lesion means progressive disease. Confirmation of progression is required in I resist. If no confirmation is possible, the reason has to be stated. If the patient is classified as IUPD, unconfirmed progressive disease, and there is no new imaging done or the patient dies, or if the patient is not clinically stable to continue the trial, then the reason why the progression cannot be confirmed has to be recorded and reported by the reader. Again, the important point here is that patients can only stay in the trial if they are clinically stable. In I-Resist, the IUPD has to be confirmed within 4 to 8 weeks after the IUPD time point. This is the generic comparison of the different criteria for immunotherapy. You can see the difference first in the measurement style, bidimensional versus unidimensional. I-Resist takes into account new lesions, and they are tracked separately from target lesions. Another important differentiation is that confirmation is needed to confirm progression of the lesion. Two scenarios are possible for progression confirmation. First, worsening on the same lesion category. ICPD is when you have a confirmed progressive disease. In this example on the top left, initially the tumor burden was classified as IUPD, and when it increased by greater than 5 mm in its SOD, sum of diameter, then it is confirmed as ICPD. In the second row, you can see non-target lesions, which in the beginning were IUPD, for unequivocal progression, and any increase in it would make it ICPD. For the worsening on other lesion category, on the right side of the slide, at the top, you can see an IUPD, which has to be confirmed, if the non-target lesion, or NTL, increases, or there is a new lesion, or both, then it is classified as ICPD. I-Resist is another level of rules that helps the reader in deciding the typical pattern of a progressive or non-progressive disease in immunotherapies where flares happen. This concludes our quick tour of immunotherapy response in an oncology clinical trial.
We hope you were able to learn more about this unique response criteria and how it is used. Thank you for joining us for this Imaging 101 class. If you would like to learn more about media and technologies or to watch the rest of our Imaging 101 series, please visit www.mediantechnologies.com.